So we have one last thing to learn before you spend a couple of days reviewing for a test based on the periodic table. And this is just to kind of prepare you for what we'll be doing after this test is over and as we move on to learning how elements come together to form bonds. Um, so we just wanted to go ahead and lay the groundwork now and give you plenty of practice with it. So when the time comes, you'll be really comfortable with it. So today we're going to learn how to count atoms in a compound. So just to review, um, at this point you already know what a chemical symbol is. It's usually a one or two letter set of characters, so letters, um, that is used to identify an element. So examples here are H, and I think you're probably familiar with all of these, but to be honest, H is hydrogen, HE is helium, NE is neon, W you probably haven't noticed before, and this one actually stands for tungsten, and I realize there's no W in the word tungsten, um, but as we're going to find out in the next few weeks, sometimes the element symbol is based on the Latin word, like the Latin root word, um, or where it comes from, and so this will be an extra credit opportunity for you to look that up in a couple of weeks. Finally, Li is lithium and Ag is silver, so that's another weird symbol. A chemical formula, we've talked about this before also, this is a combination of those sim symbols and it shows the ratio of elements in a compound. That means basically how many elements need to come together every single time we want to have a certain compound. So for example, if I want water, I always have to have two hydrogens paired up with one oxygen. I always have to have three of those atoms all together and when they're put together in that exact combination that's how we get water. If I only have one hydrogen and one oxygen I have something completely different. So the chemical formula is like the definition of that substance. So here's a vocabulary word that you need to know. It's called subscript. Um, the very front part of the word sub means underneath. So think of a submarine and where it belongs in the water. It goes underwater. So subscript literally means it's written beneath like the line that we normally would write on. So if you pay attention to the way the words are arranged on the screen, they follow like this imaginary line. It's kind of like being on lined paper. But then when you look at the example here and it says H2O, that 2 in red is actually set down beneath that invisible line that all of the letters are written on. So that's why it's called a subscript. So the whole purpose of this number tells us how many atoms of that individual element in front of the number are in the molecule or it's the ratio of the elements in the compound. If there is no subscript, so if there's no number at all behind the letter, it implies that there is just one of that element. So in our example for H2O, the 2 is the subscript that is assigned to hydrogen. So that means that I have two hydrogens in this compound. Oxygen has no subscript, so that implies that there is only one oxygen. So when I count atoms, I'm not going to add up all the atoms together in a total. What I'm going to do is list the atoms, like the individual elements underneath the compound, and then count them out that way. So in this case, I know that I have two H's and one O. A coefficient is a word that you have heard before in math class. So when you're talking about variables, if you have a number in front of a variable, it basically means to multiply by that number. And so the same idea is kind of translated into this. If I have a number placed in front of a chemical formula or just a symbol in an equation, this means that I have, like, I'm multiplying that formula by that number. Again, if I don't have one, it just implies that there is one of them. So in this example, I've got six CO2, six carbon dioxide molecules. So six is the coefficient, and because it's a big number and it's in front of everything, it is actually going to be used for all of the elements in the compound or the molecule. So basically what this means is I'm going to take the six and apply it to the carbon, and it's also going to get applied to the oxygen. So that means I've got six carbons, and I have 12 oxygens in this formula. The reason I have 12 is because originally I only had two oxygens, but now I have six of these molecules with two oxygens in each of them. 
So that means I'm going to multiply 6 times 2 and get 12. So just to recap everything so you can do some practice on your own tomorrow in class. If there is a subscript but there's no coefficient, all you need to do is look at the subscript for the element. So here our example again is H2O. I've got two hydrogen because the two is with the H. I only have one oxygen because there is no subscript there. Okay. Now if there is a coefficient and there's no subscript at all, you're going to use the coefficient for every element. So in this case, when I have silver sulfide, that's what this compound name is, I don't have any, any subscripts there. So all I'm going to do is carry the two over to the silver and to the sulfur and apply it to both. Now, again, if I have a subscript and a coefficient, this is basically distributing that coefficient to everything behind it. And so I'm going to multiply the coefficient by the subscript for each element. And remember, if there's no subscript, that just means there's one. Okay, you're not going to multiply by zero. So I'm going to take um, the 12 and distribute it to the carbon and then to the oxygen and carbon dioxide. So I have 12 carbons and I'm going to multiply the 12 by the 2 to get 24 oxygen. So we'll do a little bit of practice. You can ask me some questions today in class and when you have the chance to do these on your own um, you are welcome to post questions on Edmodo because I will still have access to that on my own and um, email me. We will have some time in class to review all of this information before the test. So please don't freak out if it's not 100% clear to you. But hopefully as you get some practice, you'll get really comfortable with this. And again, we're going to be using this a lot in a few weeks. So if you don't get it now, I promise you you're going to get it then. So I hope you have a great rest of the day and enjoy your weekend too.